Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of our, of our sin. The Bible says, come out of society's custom. Because I guarantee you, everything, everything that is done in society is contrary to the Bible. You know why? We're the living proof of it. We wear fringes, society laugh at us. We come out here and teach the people laugh and they mock us. The things that we speak to our family members, our friends, they laugh at us and they see us as fools. Give me Acts, Acts 3 verses 19. So you learned it so far, right sis? More than you ever learned in, in the seven day church. Now watch this. Here's my question to you. How do we, how do we repent? Because the Bible stresses repentance all throughout the Bible. Repentance, change. How do we really do it? Second. Okay, asking God for forgiveness. Okay, watch this. The Bible is going to explain. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. The Bible says to repent. And be converted, meaning to change. For example, let's say I have uh, Jamaican dollars, right? Jamaican currency. I need to go and have it converted into Guyanese money. So once I go and do the conversion, I'm changing it from Jamaican dollars into Guyanese dollars. So the way we truly repent according to the Bible is we need to change. We need to change the way we think, change the way we speak, change the way we conduct ourselves, change the way we eat, change the way we dress, change the way we do things on the Lord's day. Right. Read that verse again. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So the Bible says, change, change, change. The Christian church do not teach change. The Christian church, in fact, say, come as you are, stay as you are. Meaning I can come to the church as a drug dealer, as a homosexual, and I don't have to stop dealing drugs or being a homosexual. So they don't teach repentance. Read the verse again. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. The Bible says repent so that your sins can be forgiven. Read on. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So once Christ returns, you don't have to be removed off the face of the planet. Because the Bible says when Christ returns, He's going to refresh the planet. During the time of Noah, there was a refreshing. God said, you know what? Everyone on the face of the planet is evil and wicked. I'll kill everyone except Noah and his family. So he refreshed the planet and started over. This time when Christ returns, he's going to do the exact same thing. There's a lot of evil on the face of the planet. And it needs to be removed. And he's going to kill a lot of people and start over with the righteous ones that did repent. Revelation 18 and 4. So since repentance is very, is very, very important in the Bible, in our life as Israelites, because that's who we are, we must follow what's in the Bible. Without us following what's in the Bible, once Christ returns and he refreshes the planet, if your spirit ain't right, you're going to be removed. Read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of our, of our sin. The Bible says, come out of society's custom. Because I guarantee you, everything, everything that is done in society is contrary to the Bible. You know why? We're the living proof of it. We wear fringes, society laugh at us. We come out here and teach the people laugh and they mock us. 
the things that we speak to our family members, our friends, they laugh at us and they see us as fools. So the Bible says, come out of the way society is run. Read that verse again. The book of Revelation chapter 18 of verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven say, come out of her, my people. The voice from heaven is the Bible. You're not going to hear God's voice speaking to you while you're walking down the street. The voice that you're going to hear is what the Bible says. God's word. Right. So the Bible says, come out of the customs of society. One custom today is Christmas. Christmas is found nowhere written in the Bible. But what happens? Everyone on the face of the planet celebrates Christmas. You have Muslims celebrate Christmas. You have East Indians celebrate Christmas. You have homosexuals that pass around and give gifts to their family members on Christmas. You have people that don't believe in Christ, that don't believe in the Bible, who celebrates Christmas. So Christmas is one of the customs that we need to get out of that society follows. Read on. That ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye be not partakers of her sins. So the coming out of her is talking about leaving this, the sins of society alone. And follow what's in the Bible. Read on. And that ye receive not her place. And that you receive not of her place. That you receive not of Guyana's place. Because what do they support here in this country? They support LGBTQ. Christmas is being supported. Religion is being supported. Being a prostitute is being supported. Today you have a lot of homosexual men and women that's well respected in the neighborhoods. A lot of people know the, know the local drug dealer in the neighborhood. The, 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 the thief in the neighborhood and they keep quiet so the Bible says if you're okay with it your sins have reached on to heavens go ahead for five for our sins have reached on to heaven and God has remembered our iniquities and God has remembered her iniquities meaning your sins will always be before the most High God if you don't change that's why the Bible says be converted Change. Stop doing what society does. For example, give me the Sabbath day. Society would say, you know what? Saturday is the day where you go and do all your shopping. Is that okay? No. Exodus 20. Here's why. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day. To hell what society say, to hell what the religion say, that God's laws is done away with. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day. Meaning, always have in your mind how the Sabbath day must be kept. Read on. Verse 9. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The Bible says you have six days to work. The first day of the week is Sunday. Six days from Sunday gives you the Friday. Friday at sundown when it's dark is the beginning of the Sabbath. The Sabbath ends Saturday at sundown. So you have six days to work, six days to do your shopping, six days to make money, provide for your family, have a good time. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath day. Now, if before, prior to this, you might not have known, in your repentance, you know what you say? I've been living my life, breaking the Sabbath since I was a kid. God says I got to change, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to apply what the Bible says about the Sabbath day. So how do we keep the Sabbath day? He's going to explain, read on. In it, thou shalt not do any work. The seventh day, Friday sundown until Saturday sundown, no work should be done. So all that you see going on in society today, that they teach us okay to have your stand on the block, to have your, your music playing, to be fixing cars, making money. The Bible says on the seventh day that should not be. Because the seventh day is the Lord. You have six days for yourself. 
You can't sacrifice one day for the most high God that makes that that gives you 24 hours of oxygen, 365, until it's the time for you to die. So God says, listen, I just want one day out of the week. We know. No, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle. Not a stranger that is within thy gate. So no one should be working on the seventh day, on the Lord's day, which is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. That's the seventh day. Because according to the Bible, the day begins at evening. The day does not begin at sunrise. The day does not begin 12 at midnight. Biblically speaking, the day begins once the sun goes completely down and is dark. We know for six days, the Lord made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in it, all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. God Himself rested on the seventh day. After six thousand years of work, God says, "You know what? I'll take a day off." So God Himself is resting on this day. Now, if you look up to God, if you love God as a lot of people say today and you respect him you're gonna do what you're gonna do as he do Christians say you gotta be Christ like guess what Christ is doing currently honoring the Sabbath day go ahead wherefore the Lord bless the Sabbath day and hallowed it today the Sabbath day is a hallowed day it's the most sacred day that God gave us you understand that? So on the seventh day, what did we learn so far? There's no buying. There's no working. There's no working. No one should be laboring. And you have Sunday to Friday to work. Then once the sun sets, is the Lord's Sabbath. Now give me that buying. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. And here the people of the land bring where are any vigilant on the Sabbath day to sell? If anyone brings stuff to sell on the Sabbath day, read, that we would not buy of it of them on the Sabbath day. So the Bible says no buying should be done on the Sabbath day. Guess what? Today is the Lord's Sabbath day. So all these stands and shops and hustle that a lot of people is doing today is breaking God's laws. And if you're a part of it, the Bible says, your sins reached onto heaven because you're breaking the Sabbath day every single week. Every single week, the Sabbath day is being defiled. So your sin level is rising. It's rising, it's rising. Once it gets to the heaven where God can't take it no more, like he did during the time of Noah, he said, listen, these people ain't no damn good. They can't be fixed. So you know what I gotta do? I gotta kill a few, I gotta kill a few millions of them. So I'll send a disease on the face of the planet, I'll make an earthquake, I'll make a few car crash. That's what God does. Once your sin gets to a certain level, He says, I gotta take you out because you there's no way you're gonna change now. But the Bible says, repent. Repent, repent, repent. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.